so in video games, it is one thing for your game to function properly, but your feature working in style is also very important. For example, look at this moving cube. This cube ain't slaying. So to apply some drip to how the cube is moving, we will use linear interpolation. The way linear interpolation works is by using this simple equation. All this equation is doing is adding the difference between a and b multiplied by a percentage t to the starting point a. Smoothing has to be applied to the t value in order for the linear interpolation function to properly go from value a to b instead of going from value a to a value that is infinitely close to b. What I mean by going infinitely close to b is doing this. This code here makes it to where the affected transform will never reach the target position because the t value being passed in is never 1. When thinking in the equation provided earlier, the full difference between the start and target is never being added, thus leading to the resultant becoming infinitely closer to the target. Think of this like a vertical asymptote in a rational function. So with all that in mind, how do we apply smoothing to the t value in order to properly smoothly move an object from a to b? Well, this is where some trigonometry comes into play. Here is a sine function graphed using the website that carried me in my math classes, Desmos. By visual inspection, you can see when the sine function approaches 1 and negative 1, you can see how it looks like a Bezier curve. This is what we will take advantage of to make the t-value nice and smooth. An issue we have, however, is that linear interpolation does not work with values between negative 1 and 1. It works with values between 0 and 1. So to account for this, we can apply some transformations on the sine function. This function above produces a sine function that only goes between 0 and 1. Now let's apply this in c -sharp code. In your assets, make a new script called Transform Interpolator. And once Unity is done compiling, open up Visual Studio and let's get coding. So first create two variables that store references to the game objects representing target destinations. Let's call them A and B. Once that is done, make a variable storing the speed at which the object will move, a variable that stores a reference to the current target object, and a variable that stores the current sine function evaluation time. Next up, create a new function that returns a float that utilizes the sinusoidal function discussed earlier. Now in the update function, we will check if the affected transform's position is not equal to the target position. If it isn't, then the sine time float will be increased by delta time multiplied by move speed. After that is done, we will clamp the sine time between 0 and pi, so our evaluate function will return a value from 0 to 1. Also in the start function, the current and target reference variables will be initialized, and the affected transform will be set to the current transform reference. Now let's create a swap function that simply swaps the current and target references, and resets the sign time variable. We will also add in a condition that will run only when the affected transform shares the same position as the target position. With all this code complete, the transform movement code is complete. Now all that needs to be done is to create two transforms, one named A and the other named B, and a cube called whatever, I don't know. With those created, add the transform interpolator mono behavior to your cube, assign the A and B transforms in speed, and with that done, if you press play, you'll see the cube smoothly interpolate back and forth between the two assigned transforms. That is all for this video, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Goodbye.